Okay, happy Friday, everybody. Thanks for your patience. I got some news yesterday in an email that many of the carriers, the companies that provide prescription drug plan insurance, they have decided to not pay people like me to do that kind of work anymore. So, okay. They didn't pay us a ton in the beginning anyway, but still, when you're helping quite a few people, that can certainly add up. Now, it's not a shock because I knew this was kind of coming. I've been keeping track of things and changes over the last few years. It looks like what I was kind of feeling is coming true. So let's take a look at a couple articles so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, my thoughts, my background on this overall picture, just my opinion, is simply uh, there's, there's a push to get people onto Medicare Advantage plans instead of Medicare supplements, theory. It may be absolutely true. It may be all wet, but I, that's what this move certainly seems to support. So here's what I mean. Let's take a look at this article here. Okay, so this is from the Centers for Medicare Medicaid Services, CMS, and they release 2025 Medicare Part D bid information and announce premium stabilization demonstration. Sound clear as day, right? You know exactly what they're trying to do. get. All right, so this has to do with the Inflation Reduction Act. And part of the reason I've been slow in getting information out to you is because things are always changing and that's not going to change. So it's really how we react to those changes and what can I do to get you in the best position possible without going out of business. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but you probably enjoy getting paid something when you put the effort in. And I know the mortgage company likes to get their check each month and they're not going to stop sending that bill. How happy do you think your wife would be if you were out on the street because you were working all day, but not bringing home any income? <laughs> okay. So let's look at this article. Today, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services releasing preliminary technical data Yada, yada, yada. All right. So they are announcing a voluntary demonstration to support implementation of the redesign Part D benefit and improve stability for people with Medicare in 2025. Sounds harmless so far. Preliminary average premiums will be released later this summer. They'll release 2025 landscape in mid to late September. That's what's happening now. All right, see if we can summarize this. So the Inflation Reduction Act lowers out-of-pocket prescription drug costs. You remember a couple of years ago when President Trump started that process and put that ball into play, which is great. Glad to see these two are able to run with it. All right, here are the changes, the improvements going into effect in 2025. First, we have the... Beneficiary out-of-pocket spending is capped at $2,000. That means, and let's look at it from both sides. Let's say you're an independent business owner, and let's say you are the customer. Let's say you, from the customer's viewpoint, if my medication costs 10 grand a year, let's say, out-of-pocket for me, and you cap my spending at 2000 that's great. What could be better? Trouble is the business owner side, let's use Mutual of Omaha, for example. Mutual of Omaha said, well, hey, we can't sustain our business model this way. So we're out of the PDP, the prescription drug plan business for 2025. All right. So they're out because it's not a sustainable financial model. They can't run a business that way. Okay. The coverage gap fees, also known as the donut hole will be eliminated, which means that the Part D structure, the standard Part D skeleton, if you will, will be made up of three phases. You're going to have your 
deductible fees and initial coverage fees and the catastrophic fees. There will be no initial coverage limit and the initial coverage fees will extend to the maximum out-of-pocket threshold, at which point the catastrophic phase will begin. All right. There used to be a coverage gap discount program being replaced by the manufacturer discount program. And so this is kind of the behind the scenes how the total out-of-pocket spending number is dictated because it's not just what comes out of your pocket, it's other factors as well. Overall, these changes mean that the government subsidy to Part D plans is shifting from largely being reconciled on the back end based on beneficiary costs, i.e. reinsurance payments, to a larger risk-adjusted government Part D subsidy payment the IRA also provides a premium stabilization mechanism to limit the average premium increases for people enrolled in Part D to about two bucks. Due to both of these changes, a higher percentage of the plan bid amounts, that is to say, plans estimates of expected costs for an average enrollee, will be paid by the government subsidy on plans and thus changes to plan bid amounts do not reflect potential premium changes to enrollees. Here is the voluntary demonstration that CMS is conducting to test whether additional premium stabilization and revise risk corridors for PDPs. The CMS wants to test out some things. They're calling that a demonstration. It's going to last for one year. And... It's voluntary and nationwide. CMS has structured the demonstration so that all standalone Part D sponsors offering drug plans participate to provide stability across the entire Part D market. Duration. The demonstration is designed for one year with the parameters described in at least two subsequent demonstration years with parameters to be adjusted to reflect market conditions and variation in those years. However, if a Part D sponsor rejects this protection for beneficiaries, I love the phrase, the protection for beneficiaries. Well, how protected are the beneficiaries when they have to now navigate Part D by themselves because the agents aren't incentivized to do so? Next steps, Part D sponsors of PDPs must inform CMS of their intent to participate in the PDP demonstration for uh, calendar year 2025. CMS will release premiums to plan sponsors for all eligible PDPs based on submitted bids. And as they will be under the demonstration on Monday, July 29, Part D sponsors can inform CMS of their participation. Why is CMS doing this? The IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, pay attention to the words because usually they give you quite the hint as to what's going on, right? I just find it hard to believe that it's, okay, why is, why is CMS conducting this demonstration? Now, they made significant changes with this IRA. Uh, the IRA includes protections that constrain the average level of premium increases. So they want to make sure you don't pay more than an increase of $2 per month each year going forward in your, in your premium. So what happens to Part D enrollees whose plans your company doesn't participate? As always, people with Medicare should review their health care needs for upcoming year during the open enrollment period and determine if they would benefit from changing plans. They may find a Medicare drug plan with better coverage and or a lower premium in 2025 by shopping, available plans, and comparing costs. Okay, so let me see if I got this straight. Good for the seniors who can do everything by themselves and know how to use technology and shop the plans or who are fine with spending, you know, a lot of time on the telephone with 800 numbers waiting on hold, you're all set. Okay. But yes, as always, I mean, we're going to help. I will help you continue to compare what's going on for 2025. The challenge that I have in addition to other 
industry professionals is how do you operate a business and spend time on that business and help people without making any income? That sounds like, you know, charity and that's fine, but that's why we have the community garden and church and other things to give our money to. So until the mortgage company becomes a charity and they let me live here for free, the reality is you, know, you need to get paid. I mean, you didn't go to work for no money, did you? Okay. Oh, by the way, now we have to do 16 hours of continuing education every year to certify for every single company, which they had us do that this year. You have to get it done before September because of the rules. Otherwise they stop your income. Okay. So why is this video coming out today? Well, number five, why isn't CMS releasing preliminary premium information like CMS usually does in July? Well, plan premium information will be impacted by participation in this voluntary demonstration. Therefore, CMS must wait until plans, the companies, inform CMS of their intent to participate by August 5th. CMS will then work to calculate preliminary average premiums. Once the offerings are finalized, we'll release final Part D premiums at the individual plan level in September, consistent with past years. Why did the national average monthly amount increase? It went from $64 in 24 to 179 in 25. This is in line with a significant portion of the monthly increase represents funds moving from reinsurance payments to upfront payments in the form of the government subsidy to plans. The preliminary average subsidy is 142 in change. Furthermore, CMS is conducting the voluntary Part D premium stabilization demonstration to test whether additional premium stabilization and revised risk corridors for standalone PDPs increase the efficiency and economy of services under the Medicare Part D program as the benefit improvements and changes to plan liability for beneficiary costs under the IRA go into effect. Agents fight for Part D commissions. Medicare agents are fighting back against the recent decision by some health plans to continue paying commissions on Medicare Part D plans, demanding that WellCare pay agents their commissions they earn from the sale of a carrier's Part D plans. So, you know, as an agent, you fill out a contract that says you have to do certain things to represent that company and they agree to pay you X amount of money. So, the agents did everything they were supposed to do and brought on new clients. And it's interesting because over the past couple of years, if you recall on WellCare's premium, this year it dropped to 40 cents. The prior year, I forget, it was 11 or $12. So I don't know how many thousands of percentage decrease that is, but it's interesting. Okay. So it was. Medicare, uh, or, I'm sorry, it was well care was the lowest cost or actually it was Silver Script Smart prior to that was seven bucks or something. And they stopped paying agents. And so, or Aetna stopped paying agents on that product. And then now well care is saying, hey, we're not paying agents on anything at all. We're not paying you on business you wrote years ago, yesterday, three months ago new people you write tomorrow, all of that work and time you spend on that, we think you're worth nothing. That's basically what that's saying. Now, I could be reading it all wrong. I'm a little, you know, opinionated, as you can see. But tell me, what, how else do you see it, right? Okay. So Hafa argues that fair compensation, not just, okay, in the matter of equity, without fair compensation, the system fails everyone. Most of all, the seniors who need it the most. I agree. These decisions by health plans threaten not only the livelihoods of Medicare agents, but also the communities they serve and the seniors who rely on their expert guidance to navigate this complex Medicare system. These agents invest significant time in educating their clients, ensuring that seniors of vulnerable populations receive the personalized guidance they need to make informed healthcare decisions. Their work goes beyond enrollment, helping clients set up affordable medication options and resolving claim issues. Right? So, 
Yeah, it says right here, for less than $4.60 a month per client, these agents are far from being money-driven. They're dedicated professionals committed to their clients and well-being. Keep in mind, there's different levels of compensation for agents. So if you have more managers above you, then they're all getting a piece too. So that 460 something could be like two bucks. So for $24 a year, how much time would you spend? If you're running just strictly from a business, how much money would you spend? If you're making a financial decision, would you invest a lot of time into that income source? Right, so that's what the problem is. They're putting agents who care and want to do a good job and also want to survive in this earth and feed their family. They're putting us in a position where now we have to either tell you to go pound sand and figure it out yourself. Okay. And yeah, what you will hear is call the SHIP program, the state health insurance program, and call, you know, one of your Medicare. Have you done that before? If it works for you, great. You know. I've got kicked off of the Medicaid website and hung up on on the Medicaid website in the state of Maryland because they have a 10 minute time limit. It doesn't matter what's going on. It just ends. You can't log in. You can't call. Call ends. All right. Hoffa president and CEO Ronald Nolan told the insurance news that the carriers are using this IRA as a reason for eliminating agents commissions on Part D plans. The Inflation Reduction Act imposed a 2000 annual out-of-pocket spending cap on Medicare drugs in 2025. But not only is this cutting commissions, it's removing the professional from the senior who needs help selecting Medicare Part D. We talk all the time about how complex it is to pick the right plan with the right medicine at the right price, right? And there's pharmacies, preferred, not standard, out-of-network. WellCare has made a decision and said they're going to blame it on the Inflation Reduction Act and they're going to cut commissions. Nolan said her members told her that they had signed contracts to represent WellCare during the upcoming open enrollment period before the carrier told them it would not pay commissions on Part D plans. NAFA will work with Centers for Medicaid, okay, will work with CMS to communicate the implications of approving these plans that will curtail personal service and offer solution to protect our most vulnerable citizens. This decision could result in services being reduced or eliminated, harming consumers who rely on agents or brokers. Yeah, it, you know, for me, it's okay. I, I'm going to take care of people no matter what. Exactly how that looks like at this moment, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. My wife came down, she's headed out to do some shopping and she's looking at me like, oh, aren't you wasting a lot of time? To... No spending a lot of time thinking about this because how we do it from here is going to be important. So I am working on some plans to make sure that it's easy for you to transition or not. 